Hello, I'm Dada, and today I have for you another advancement in splitter technology, CUD-based filter and improved shulker box splitters. First and foremost, you have to give credit where credit's due. A lot of different people worked on this and I could not have done it alone. So in alphabetical order, the primary developers for this line of splitters are Barcelona, who got the ball rolling on this project, C5, who polished up the final designs, myself, who made the first working prototypes, Masantic, who diagrammed out potential logic schemes we could use for these kinds of splitters, and Program Trouble, who cleaned up timings and delays to make these splitters as fast as we could make them. Their associated links are in the description below. So there are some special mentions. First, Dragon Babyfly. They were independently developing this technology a few years ago. Unfortunately, their designs are all private as far as I know, but I would like to acknowledge all their work thus far. Next, there's Marcus, who made a prototype for a dustless 8-game tick CUD. Next, there's Palapala, Pala, who actually reincited this project, uh, coincidentally, through the lost city of v3.100. Uh, there is Pseudomagnetism for helping optimize the wiring on the 9-game tick splitter, and Exior for wiring uh, Marcus's 8-game tick CUD prototype to be too wide titleable. Anyone I forgot to mention will be listed below with any associated links. Now, onto the splitters. In case you aren't familiar with the objective of a shulker box splitter, the goal is to take a mixed item shulker box such as this. It can have non-stackable items, fragmented 64 stackable items, uh, fragmented 16 stackable items, single 64 stackable items, or single 16 stackable items, and give you unique single item type shulker boxes. So the ideal output from a shulker box splitter would look something like this. In one stream, you would have single unique item type shulker boxes for all stackable items. So what that means is that there's only one shulker box per item type and only one item type per shulker box. And in a second stream, you would have any unstackable contents from the shulker box as well as the initial empty shulker box itself. In front of me are the two splitters we've developed. On the left is a 12 wide 8 game tick CD splitter primarily by C5 and some modifications by myself to fix hopper update, hopper update order issues. <laughs> On the right is a 15 wide, fully hopper locked 9 game tick CD splitter by myself, Barcelona, and Cena Magnetism. And we'll first take a look at the 8 game tick CD splitter. So, if we look inside the filter hopper here, you can see that there are no actual filter items, uh, just these unstackable blocker items to limit the hopper to a single slot. Now, what this means is that the splitter cannot fail due to an accidental filter item input as opposed to previous splitter designs, including my ideal output choker box splitter. Some other notes are that these splitters have been designed around using a, a dropper line as a fast dropper line as your input. Um, in terms of the 8 game tick CD splitter in particular, we use a 45 meter per second dropper line input. Now, in tandem with this dropper line input, we also have an array wide status output that will let you know if uh, splitters in the array are able to accept uh, more uh, more input boxes. So. Let's say uh, the, all the splitters in the array are currently in use, then the lamp will be off. And let's say one of them comes back into use, then the lamp will turn on and uh, your system knows it's able to accept more input boxes. Um, and the last thing is that besides the, uh, the two dust here for the status output, there is no dust, no dust updates within the actual slice. There is only a little bit of dust down here but that does stay static and it's just used for signal strength correction on the unstackable filter. For the 9 game tick CUD splitter, it's pretty much the same in terms of the, the filter hopper having no filter items, uh, there are no uh, internal dust updates, and uh, the status output. There, the dropper line is a little bit faster, so the dropper line uh, functions at 90 meters per second as opposed to 45 meters per second, but beyond that it's pretty much the same. In terms of the hopper locking, um, the hopper locking is all marked in red. Uh, it looks a little bit daunting because there are just a lot of wires that uh, exist for the hopper locking, especially within the distribution section. But uh, I've included signs that can hopefully, uh, uh, signs in the world down low that can hopefully explain uh, how these wires work and how they uh, work with each other. The distribution, um, the distribution locking is primarily designed around how I like to do uh, shulker box or empty box distribution, but uh, you can adjust it to your needs. Oh, another feature that I forgot to mention on both of these is that they have global, uh, a global hopper line here for uh, sorry, global hopper line here for uh, empty box distribution. So that's on the nine game tick, and this is the one on the eight game tick. 
now uh, I believe I've mentioned all the features I wanted to mention. Uh, right, one more. <laughs> There's also this little light blue circuit down here that can be used to get rid of a buffer non-stackable uh, from the splitter. Now that I've mentioned all the features, uh, we will see these splitters in action. So this is the shulker box we'll be inputting. It's pretty similar to the shulker box from the start of the video. Uh, let me grab a second copy of that for the 8 game tick splitter. So we're going to put it in the 9 game tick, and we're going to put it in the 8 game tick. So you can see here the 9 game tick is clocking uh, items out of the filter hopper. You can look at the uh, 8 game tick as well, clocking items out of the filter hopper. Uh, and once we detect a transition, probably detected on the 8 game tick, it's easier to see. Once we detect a transition, this piston will extend and we will break the shulker box down here once it gets to its last item. And as you can see, it can work with a, a single item. So the nine game tick is probably done by now. It's pretty pretty quick. So we can just have a look at the, uh, at the output. So here we have the unstackable contents from the box. And here is the actual box itself. And this is uh, where the light blue circuit could come in handy to get that, to get that box out. And if we look in the stackable output stream, as you can see, we have single single item type unique shulker boxes. So one shulker box per item type and one item type per shulker box. Now the eight game tick is probably done by now, so we can have a look at its output as well. Here are the two non-stackable uh, two non-stackable items from the shulker box, and then here are the uh, unique shulker boxes. So remember, single item type per shulker box, single shulker box per item type. And the 8 game tick CUD unfortunately doesn't have a way to nicely clock out clock out that uh, that buffer shulker box. So you are left with a, a buffer shulker box right here. Uh, and now we'll be looking at some edge cases. These will be the edge cases we'll be looking at today. Um, I've also included what uh, each of these boxes will be testing on the CD splitters on the signs. So we'll have an empty box. We'll have a box with a single item in it, a box that alternates between two and one item, a box with a lot of unstackable filter, unstackable items in a row, a box with a lot of single items in a row, and then uh, just for completion's sake, some boxes with filter items just to demonstrate the filter, filter item proofness of these splitters. So I'm going to double these up, one for the eight game tick and one for the nine game tick, and let's have a look. So on the 8 game tick, I have the empty box, as you can see. It takes a little while, but it will break the box. Uh, 9 game tick. Uh, this one's a little bit faster, and it will break the box. We will look at single item. So single item, we should see the, uh, the, loader, uh, the loader break the box. That's fine. And we'll get our single item down there. Try it on the 9 game tick that we should see the loader work fine right there and now we will test two one then alternating so eight game tick and nine game tick so if we look here we should see the uh the piston transition correctly so even though uh the sticky piston gets zero ticked for a little bit it doesn't actually power this piston um here we have two one then two one then two one and we can see that it also worked here on 2 1 then 2 1 then 2 1. Uh, we will test the unstackable filter speed. So 9 game tick and 8 game tick. So if we look here, the unstackable filter is keeping up and that's all fine. Well, if we look over here, the unstackable filter is keeping up and that's fine. Uh, here you can actually also see that the eight game tick transition time is a lot is a lot slower than the nine game tick. Uh, we will test the nine game tick with single items, so we should see the loader be able to keep up. So as you can see, one, two, and it's all fine. We will put it in the eight game tick as well, and as you can see, the the loader is the loader is doing fine here, and we're we are getting the 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 flowers in the in uh, none of the flowers are merging and we can see that the the flowers are are all good here as well next we'll be uh, just testing the filter item proofness of these splitters 
And there we go. So this one's done. Do that. And we will also test the trailing filter item. So if we look in here, we got our two boxes with the filter item and pumpkin pie. We should get sand next. And the nine game take is probably done by now. So as you can see, we got our filter items uh, split correctly. And here we should also have filter item box. And then here are the unstackable items and the unstackable items. Uh, and I'll just uh, clock out that last uh, box just for completion. There you go. And now we'll be uh, doing a quick proof of tileability. For the proof of tileability test, I have set up a raise of size 4 for both the 8 game tick CD splitters and the 9 game tick CD splitters. Uh, I've also gone ahead and color-coded each of the tiles in in both arrays. And the box we'll be using to test the tile ability is this box here. So this box has one, two, three, four, five, six, six unique item types, and three non-stackable items. So what we should expect to see from in the output are... Uh, four sets of different colored shulker boxes and within each set six shulker boxes uh six unique single item type shulker single item type shulker boxes that's a little bit of a mouthful to say and in the non-stackable output we should expect to see three cakes as well as four empty shulker boxes i have also set up a, a makeshift input system here so hopefully it doesn't break on me crap mess that up all right We'll deal with that box later when we get to it. We should also expect to see that once the splitters are operating at full speed, that the lamp turns off. And that goes for the 9 game tick lamp as well. Alright, here we go. So as you can see, the lamp has turned off to indicate we can't input any more shulker boxes. And the lamp turns off here to also indicate we can't input any more shulker boxes. Come down here, as you can see, we've gotten our non-stackable items here. And we are getting our our, um, our stackable outputs here. And we should get the light blue soon and the yellow soon. And if we look at the 9 game tick, we will see pretty much the same thing. Uh, and yeah, we are finishing up the, uh, the boxes, it looks like. And then here, we are getting the, the cakes. And looks like the 8 game tick is done. And as you can see, we have our four shulker boxes, 12 cakes. We look here, we, I, I'll let you verify this for yourself, so I'll just scroll over. And we can have a look at the nine game tick output. I'll scroll over. And we have four shulker boxes, 12 cakes. Now, the uh, other thing to mention is that both of these designs are two wide AB tileable. So what that means is that you have to switch rail types every tile. So you have to switch rail types down here. And I believe that is the only place on the eight game ticks. Oh, wait, no, also down here. Yeah. And you have to also switch rail types down there. And then on the nine game ticks, uh, so what are you have to switch rail types over here and switch rail types over here. But beyond that, the rest of the wiring is the exact same uh, across all tiles. These are some quick advantages and disadvantages between clock-based and CD-based splitters. CD-based splitters have a primary advantage in that they have no filter items, so they can work with all input conditions, but they generally come with the cost of having clocking pistons, which can get laggy when scaled. Clock-based splitters, on the other hand, although they have filter items, which means they can return field splits with trailing filter items in the input, they can generally be tiled more densely and don't have many clocking pistons, which helps with scaling. So how do CD base splitters work? And first off, what is a CD? So you might already be familiar with the term BUD, BUD, or Block Update Detector. A BUD is a component that's in an unstable condition such that it responds to block updates. So this is probably the simplest one. It's a piston powered by QC, but it doesn't know that. So it will respond every time I press the note block. A CUD is essentially a BUD where that component is a comparator. 
So as you can see, the comparator is, is powered even though there is no inventory behind it. So it will respond every time I, uh, I press this note block. But a CUD can also detect inventory updates, which a normal block update detector can't. So every time I throw an item into this hopper, and in that uh, hopper pushes the item into the chest, uh, we'll get a pulse on the comparator. And if I do that on the block update detector, you'll see that we don't get a we don't get a pulse. Now, uh, comparators being able to read inventory updates, um, or being able to be CUDs being able to be updated by inventory updates, what that means is that we can. Uh, detect the flow of items as opposed to enforcing a pause on the flow of items. So to put it simply, uh, where clock-based splitters enforce a transition delay between item types, CUD-based splitters detect the transition point between item types. Now this CUD in front of us is a rising edge CUD, so I'm going to show you how you can make a dual and falling edge CUD really quickly. Chest locking is makes for a really simple dual edge CUD, so um, in case you aren't familiar, a uh, comparator can't read uh, an inventory from chest. So if the chest can't be opened, the comparator can't read from it. And we can use that property to make a really nice dual edge CUD. So every time I press this note block, uh, the, uh, the CD uh, toggles. And to make a dual edge CUD into a falling edge CUD, it's really simple. All you have to do is add an extra block update on the rising edge. So as you can see, it'll just reset itself to a falling edge. And uh, what this allows you to do is have your variable filter right here. And then uh, you can have the CUD in the back. So once you have your falling edge CUD, uh, you need to be able to perform two tasks to convert that into a splitter. So the first is item defragmentation, which is filtering from the variable filter. So if you're lucky, you can just do it with good timings. But if you're unlucky, then you'll need to have an AND gate between the current pulse of the CUD and the previous pulse of the CUD. The second task you have to accomplish is item gating. Uh, so that's just detecting the transition point between item types. And the way that you do that is detect when the CUD stops clocking. So I've gone ahead and stripped down the 8 game tick CUD and the 9 game tick CUD, on my left and my right respectively. And I've also uh, added in lamps to show you where we're getting the output for the item defragmentation and the item gating. So the 8 game tick CUD uses an AND gate. It uses an AND gate to get the item defragmentation. So we have a short pulse, which will get the current pulse of the CUD, and a long pulse, which will get the, the uh, previous pulse of the CUD. So if I spam click this note block, you can see that we're getting pulses on the redstone lamp. But if I just click it once, we won't get a pulse from the redstone lamp. And when the CD stops clocking, you'll see that this piston will be able to extend and uh, trigger the lamp. But if the CD is clocking, then the piston is unable to extend. The 9 game tick CD, on the other hand, is a lot more forgiving. That extra game tick really comes in handy. Uh, and uh, it uses just really good timings to get the item defragmentation. And uh, it uses also really good timings to get the item gating. It's kind of difficult to demonstrate um, just using a note block, but I can just uh, do my best to show you. All right. I've also included the initial prototypes of the 9 game tick CUD and the 8 game tick CUD splitters, um, just in case you're interested in some storage tech history. Anyhow, that concludes my video on CUD based splitters. As always, the world download is available on my Discord server linked below. And if you have any questions, I suggest you redirect them to Discord. I am much more likely to respond. Now, my voice is very, very tired, so if there's anything else I need to say, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the description. Once again, thank you to all the people who worked on this project. The goal of a filterless, filter itemless storage is, is on the horizons, to say the least. I know I haven't uploaded a lot lately, but I'm hoping to get back into it into the coming weeks. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.